Hello, my name is Lily, a 33-year-old writer whose first mystery novel was a smashing success. I've been married for eight years to my husband, Thomas. We share a seven-year-old son named Gary. Originally, Thomas worked, but he left his job a few years ago when my writing career took off, allowing him the leisure to stay at home, though he occasionally ventured out to play slot machines. Lately, however, I've been facing a distressing situation. Thomas has been involved in an affair, lavishly spoiling his mistress with expensive gifts, shockingly financed by my own credit card. This betrayal, which I've endured for the sake of our son, has reached a point where I can no longer bear the strain. On a peculiar morning, Thomas dressed in a suit, an unusual choice given his current routine of unemployment. Curious, I asked him about it. He appeared startled at first, but gained his composure to tell me he was heading for a job interview, hinting at a potential shift towards contributing financially again. I wished him luck, sincerely hoping this marked a positive change. However, my trust wavered when he returned home at 2 a.m., leaving me awake and filled with doubts about the true nature of his outing. Working late to meet an upcoming deadline, my heart sank when Thomas staggered through the door well past midnight. He collapsed on the living room sofa, his suit reeking of alcohol and perfume, his smartphone loosely clutched in his hand, screen glaringly unlocked. Driven by a mix of suspicion and disbelief, I peered at his phone. The texts I saw confirmed the unthinkable. Thomas was having an affair but the pain deepened as I realized his lover was none other than my close friend, Gloria. The messages revealed they had dined at a luxurious restaurant known for its romantic night views, a place he had never taken me. The shock was like a physical blow. Tears clouded my vision as I grappled with the betrayal of two people I trusted deeply. Gloria, who was married herself, had always been a confidant. In quiet turmoil, not wanting to awaken Thomas, I quickly forwarded the incriminating evidence to my own phone to safeguard it. I needed time to think, to plan my next steps carefully. The following morning, as if nothing had happened, Thomas carried on with his usual demeanor. I approached him casually. Hey, Thomas, about yesterday. You said you had an interview, but came home quite late. What happened? He averted his eyes, clearly searching for an excuse. Actually, I ran into a friend after the interview, and we ended up going for a drink. He muttered. A friend? Someone I don't know. I probed, though I already knew the answer. I don't have to explain everything, do I? He snapped back. Yeah, you're right. I replied, a mix of frustration and resignation settling in. His evasion confirmed my worst fears about his ongoing deceit with Gloria. A month after uncovering the painful truth about my husband Thomas's affair, I was still wrestling with indecision. The reality of confronting him loomed large. Doing so could very well spell the end of our marriage. Under different circumstances, I might have already presented him with the evidence and filed for divorce. However, our son Gary, only seven years old, was my primary concern. I couldn't bear the thought of tearing his father away from him at such a tender age. Meanwhile, Thomas seemed to exploit my busy schedule. He began leaving the house more often while my days were consumed by writing in my room. Although this hurt, it also presented an unexpected opportunity to gather more evidence of his infidelity. During one of his outings, I sifted through his belongings and discovered a collection of receipts for luxury women's items, none of which were found in our home, nor had they been gifted to me. It was clear he was purchasing these for Gloria, but the source of the funds was baffling. He had no job and was living off the allowance I provided, which left no room for such extravagant expenses. Driven by a need to uncover more, I decided to follow him. But first, I needed someone to look after Gary. I called my brother, 
who was unaware of the situation. I'm sorry for calling you over so suddenly. I apologized when he arrived. No, I don't mind. But what's up? You suddenly said you want me to look after Gary, he inquired with a puzzled look. There's something I really need to go shopping for on my own, I explained, crafting a cover story. Shopping? You've never been materialistic. You usually shop online, he observed, clearly skeptical. I know, I replied, feeling a twinge of guilt for the deception, but knowing it was necessary to protect my family and uncover the full extent of Thomas's betrayal. In the chill of an early morning, with my heart weighed down by doubt, I asked my brother for a favor. I need to pick something up from a store today, something I can't order online. Can you watch Gary for a bit? I tried to keep my voice light, hiding the real reason behind my urgent need to leave the house. Of course, but try to come back soon, okay? Gary might start missing you. My brother responded, concern evident in his tone. Thanks so much, I said, my gratitude genuine despite the turmoil swirling inside me. With my brother's unwitting assistance, I was free to pursue the truth about Thomas's activities. Blending into the crowd, I followed Thomas from a safe distance. My heart sinking further with each step he took toward his destination. My worst fears were confirmed when I spotted him cozy and carefree, strolling into an upscale boutique arm in arm with Gloria. Witnessing their intimacy firsthand was a harsh blow. As they laughed and perused the items, Thomas made his way to the cashier. I watched, hidden behind a display, as he confidently handed over a credit card, the very card from the back of my drawer that was meant for emergencies. This secondary card, seldom used by me, had been his secret tool for financing these extravagant purchases. Realization dawned on me. I had been so engrossed in my writing and upcoming deadlines that I hadn't monitored our finances closely. Significant charges had accumulated on the card from my recent work-related expenses. At all this time, Thomas had been adding his deceitful transactions to the bill. Both of our cards were linked to the same account, and I had missed the signs of his betrayal hidden amidst my expenses. Stunned by the depth of his deceit, not only had Thomas betrayed my trust romantically, but he had also abused my financial resources. I felt the last strands of affection for him evaporate. Self-reproach mingled with my shock. I chastised myself for not noticing sooner and for allowing his duplicity to go unchecked. The realization of his double betrayal was a bitter pill to swallow marking a turning point in how I viewed our marriage. Despite the crushing evidence of betrayal, I couldn't find it within myself to forgive Thomas. With a heavy heart, I documented his intimate moments with Gloria through discreet photographs before heading home. In the days that followed, I poured my energy into devising a plan to confront him. Whenever he was out, I scored his PC for more clues. Since his phone and computer were linked, I could easily access their communications, and it wasn't long before I uncovered plans for a getaway with Gloria over the upcoming holiday, a six-day trip. This is my chance, I muttered to myself, a mix of resolve and despair coloring my thoughts. I planned to confront Thomas and settle matters while he was away with his lover. However, I faced a significant obstacle our son, Gary. I needed to ensure he remained shielded from the painful truth of his father's affair, and executing my plan without him getting wind of any details would be tricky. Reluctantly, I decided to seek help from my brother once more. I hate to ask, but can you look after Gary during the upcoming holidays? I inquired, trying to sound casual. The holidays? You mean all six days? He asked, his voice laced with suspicion. Yes, I have something important to handle, I replied, trying to mask my anxiety. Something important, huh? He eyed me with a look that suggested he knew more than I had shared. His next words caught me off guard. 
Lily, you don't have to handle everything by yourself. What do you mean? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Thomas is cheating, isn't he? He said bluntly. My heart skipped a beat. How did you? I stammered, but he cut me off. I heard it from Gary, he said gently. Gary, my son knew. Even though he was just a child, it appeared he had picked up on enough to realize something was amiss. He had seen his father getting close to someone who wasn't me, and it had upset him. My brother's revelation was a stark reminder of how sensitive and observant children can be, even at a young age. It seemed Gary had sensed the tension and sadness in our home, further complicating the emotional landscape of our family. I had thought I was shielding Gary well from the turmoil at home. Why? My brother pressed gently, his words cutting through my defenses. Thomas's actions have hurt you enough for even Gary to notice. Are you considering staying with him? As I wrestled with the implications of a divorce, fearing it would deeply affect Gary, my son unexpectedly walked into the room. It's okay, Mom. I'm on your side, he said, his young voice resolute. I don't want anyone who makes you sad, Mom. As long as I have you, I'm fine. His words, so mature for his age, brought tears to my eyes. Thank you, Gary. I managed, my voice thick with emotion. Turning to my brother, I added, and thank you too. Bolstered by the support of my son and brother, I found the courage to face what needed to be done. Gary and I began to plan our move, timing it for when Thomas would be away on his trip with Gloria. My brother aided us in packing discreetly, ensuring everything was ready for a swift departure. The evening before Thomas was set to leave, I decided it was time to confront him directly. I found him packing a suitcase in our bedroom. Thomas, why are you packing a suitcase? What's going on? I asked, feigning ignorance. Oh, this? I'm going on a trip with some friends starting tomorrow, he replied, avoiding my gaze. A trip? Why didn't you mention this earlier? I probed, pushing for more details. It was a last-minute plan. Nothing serious. I'm using my monthly allowance for it, he said dismissively his tone suggesting he wanted to end the conversation. Despite his discomfort, he continued to mask the truth. I took a deep breath and in a calm, determined voice that I rarely used asked, are you sure it's just with your friends? Thomas visibly tensed, his shoulders twitching with nerves. Despite his obvious unease, he stubbornly clung to his lie. You are insistent, aren't you? He stammered. All right, I understand. Enjoy your trip with your friends, I said, the irony not lost in my tone. I would have enjoyed it anyway, he muttered, but the assurance in his voice was forced. With everything laid bare, I knew what needed to be done. My brother, my son, and my resolve had set the stage for a new beginning, free from deceit. The next morning, after he had left for his trip, I checked the drawer, and sure enough, he had taken my credit card again. I acted swiftly, calling the card company to report it lost and had it deactivated. When my son woke up, his eyes sparkled with excitement as he asked, Mom, today's the day, right? The day we moved to our new house. Any lingering doubts I had evaporated in that moment. Yes, Gary, I smiled, reassured by his enthusiasm. I've canceled the credit card and now it's time for us to start fresh in our new home. With my brother's assistance, the move was seamless. We transferred our belongings to our new home, while my husband's things were sent elsewhere. The next day, as we settled into our new space with my son and brother, a profound sense of peace and anticipation for the future filled me. When my husband called, his voice came through the line hesitantly, Hello. Oh, Lily, what is it? Well, this trip is turning out to be more expensive than I anticipated. Could you possibly send me some money? I knew immediately that he was feeling the pinch financially because I had frozen the credit card. 
He was skirting around the real issue. His unauthorized use of the card and his indirect request for money was irritating. Did you budget for this trip on your own? I asked calmly. I'm sorry, but I can't lend you any money. His response carried a tone of frustration. Don't be like that. If you don't help me, I'll be the only one not enjoying this trip. You mean you'll be the only one? He corrected himself. His confusion was apparent even through the phone. After all, you're on a trip. You want to show only the good parts, right? But sorry, the card you took is no longer valid, so you'll have to manage. What are you talking about, Lily? What card? He feigned ignorance. Pretending not to know won't help, I countered my voice firm. You're panicking because you're saying things that don't make sense. I don't know anything about a card, he insisted. Enough, I exclaimed, my patience wearing thin. I already know you've been cheating on me with my best friend, Gloria. What did you think that I had no idea? Are you kidding me? It's obvious. No, it's not what you think. I'm not cheating, he tried to assure me, his voice desperate. I was furious that he continued to deny everything. Standing there with my brother and son next to me, all my pent-up fury erupted. Stop making excuses. You had a family, then you cheated with another woman. And to top it off, you've been using someone else's card. Do you even realize how despicable your actions are? Ah, uh, Lily, let's calm down for a moment. He tried to soothe, but it was too late. The truth was out, and there was no turning back. How can I remain calm when I'm dealing with the person I despise the most? I seethed into the phone. Just so you're aware, I have no intention of forgiving you or offering you any help. And as for her, she can take her chances elsewhere. Never show your face to Gary and me again. With those final words, I hung up on my husband. Moments later, his mistress Gloria called. Hey Lily, what on earth did you do? Ah, Gloria, long time no see. How's your trip going with my husband? I asked, my voice laced with sarcasm. Shut up and explain yourself. What are you talking about? She snapped back. Don't play dumb. You received Thomas's things at your house, didn't you? I replied, indeed, when we moved out, I had directed all of my husband's belongings to be sent directly to Gloria's address. Given that Gloria was also married, her husband was naturally there to receive the shipment. This was precisely why I had sent everything there, along with a detailed letter explaining the entire situation. She yelled back, her voice cracking under stress. This isn't a joke. What have you done? My husband found out, and now he's furious. Well, you brought this upon yourself by choosing to have an affair while married. You were supposed to be my friend, and this is a betrayal, I retorted. You're the worst. I misjudged you, she accused. Excuse me. That's rich coming from you. I fired back. My best friend having an affair with my husband. How could you expect any forgiveness? I didn't mean it seriously. It was just a joke. I would never actually be interested in someone like him. She tried to downplay. I don't care if it was a joke or not. I'm filing for divorce anyway. Then yes, you did have an affair. That's a fact. I'll never forgive you and I'll be seeking significant compensation, so be prepared. Compensation? What are you talking about? I didn't agree to anything like that, she protested. Well, you're going to hear about it soon enough. It's what you deserve, I concluded as she realized the gravity of the situation. I'm a housewife. I can't pay any compensation, she pleaded, her voice filled with desperation. I don't care. Figure it out yourself or ask your husband. Though I doubt he'll be much help, I said sharply. Oh, wait. Goodbye. I hung up before she could respond and promptly blocked her number. 
Later, I engaged my lawyer to finalize my divorce and sought compensation from my ex-husband and Gloria, along with child support. I also demanded repayment for the unauthorized credit card charges. The financial strain was too much for Gloria's marriage. After settling the compensation, her husband filed for divorce, and she found herself without a home. She sought refuge with her parents, but they, disheartened by her actions, turned her away. With limited options, Gloria now lives where she works, taking up night shifts at a local bar. Thomas, too, sought comfort from Gloria during this turbulent time, but overwhelmed by her crisis and furious with him for causing her divorce, she ended their relationship. Thomas is now juggling several part-time jobs, struggling to make ends meet. His prolonged period of unemployment has hindered his ability to find stable work. Should he ever fall behind on his alimony or child support payments, I am prepared to pursue what he owes without hesitation. As for myself, life has settled into a peaceful rhythm in our new home with my son. He's growing up fast, and each day is filled with new joys and adventures. My primary focus is on providing him with all the love and stability he needs, ensuring he never has to face the kind of turmoil we've gone through again. Our days are brighter now, and I'm committed to making sure they stay that way.